What's up, everybody? Welcome to this episode of Pen Testing for Noobs. We are now on episode nine. So this episode is going to be a refresher episode. This is kind of similar to the Optimum episode that we had where we talked and had some homework and then we went on and learned later how to solve it if we got stuck. So we're going to be attacking Granny and Grandpa. If you haven't done Granny and Grandpa yet, it's perfectly fine to stop now and give it a go and then see if you can get through it. If not, uh, follow along and we'll talk about how to exploit these. I have full confidence that if you've been following the episodes from one through eight, that you will be successful in exploiting both these machines. And both are Windows based, which we've covered a lot of and have very similar methodology between the two, which is kind of why we're grouping them together. Uh, so grandpa lives at 10.10.10.14 and grandma or granny lives at dot 15. So go ahead and get your scans up and ready. We'll attack both of those. We'll start with grandpa and then we'll move on to granny. And before we do that, as always, please do hit that like, subscribe, and hit that bell. And a special shout out this video to Vixing. So Vixing has sent me over this mouse and they're gonna be sponsoring a giveaway of several of these mice uh, in a later stream. So very comfortable. This is a wireless mouse. There's no battery that comes with it. Uh, it's got the nice scroll wheel on the side, super ergonomic, uh, sweat resistant. It's got a half a year battery life on one charge. And really it's just a overall very comfortable mouse. So uh, I've been using it the past week and really have enjoyed it. And I wouldn't endorse something that I don't enjoy. So a uh, special shout out to them, not only for, for sponsoring this video, but for also sponsoring a later stream and giving out some of these mice. If you're interested in getting your hands on one of these, these are uh, not, not actually even released, but there's a 20% discount down below and you can check it out uh, in the description for that link. So with all that being said, Let's go ahead and dive right into our first machine, which is Grandpa. All right, let's take a look at the scan results. And I swear this isn't intentional. This is probably the fourth week in a row, I think, that we only have one port open. And that's, again, convenient for us. And I don't know if it's just an indicator of the easier machines having a smaller attack surface or what exactly is the uh, what's going on here. But uh, to our benefit, nonetheless. So we look at this and right off the bat, we see that the version of the web server is Microsoft IIS 6.0. Now that is an incredibly old version of IIS. Don't quote me on this, but I think they're at least at 10 right now. So we know that we've already got a dated version here. So that's interesting. Uh, the other interesting items here are the potentially risky methods. So it's got a bunch of different methods that are allowed here. Um, one of which is trace and then the other of which is put. So with put, potentially we could put a, mal a malicious file on the server. That's not always the case. Put has other uh, uses other than just putting a malicious file on a server and it's not always uh, available to do so even if put is a, a method that's allowed. Uh, but it is potentially risky. The other one is trace. We may have talked about this in the past, but uh, there is something called cross-site tracing. Now that is when you have a cross-site scripting vulnerability and you have the capability of running trace can lead to cross-site tracing. It's a much older exploit, but when you see a potentially risky method of trace show up, this is why. And if I were to see this on a web app pen test, I would probably say, hey, why are you running trace? What's the point of leaving it, uh, leaving it open? And most people will just turn it off. Um, other than that, we can look through here and see that the title is under construction. So if we go out to the web, we could see, okay, it is under construction and this is an older IAS under construction page as well. So it's just got really that old feel to it. Um, and another thing I should point out is if you're unfamiliar with the methods or if you're unfamiliar with like the uh, response codes, like a 200 or 404, et cetera, it's best to just pick those up. It's only going to help you in your career. Uh, so, and it's probably, probably web app 101 is just to cover, you know, uh, the different response codes and uh, understanding the different methods. You may even be asked about those in an interview. So uh, definitely pick those up and understand what they mean. Looking through here, we also see that there is a Microsoft Windows 2003 possibility. That's how old IS 6.0 is. Uh, it could also be 2008, 
server XP or 2000. Uh, so let's go ahead and just take a peek at this first. Let's just copy the service. The other thing that we could do is since there's nothing here, we could run Durbuster and see if there's anything hiding behind this web server. Uh, but because it's so old, I just want to look at the service and see what kind of exploits might be out there for it. So let's go ahead and just go out to the Google machines and we'll paste this and then we'll just search for exploit because it knows us. Uh, you could tell I've navigated out to this once before in the past. Uh, but let's open up this IS 6.0 web dev and see what we can do with it. Now you can see that web dev SC storage path from URL. I'm going to go ahead and just copy this. Uh, but the description here is this a buffer overflow. OK, um, and it's capable in the web dev service in IS 6.0 in Microsoft Server 2003. It allows remote attackers to execute arbitrary code via a long header. So we need to meet a few requirements here. We have to have the web dev service. I think that's a check. We have IS 6.0, that's a check. And then Microsoft Windows Server 2003. Uh, we're not sure, but it's a good possibility that we have it. And then we can take a look at the code and just see what they're doing. Uh, looks like this is Python and they're just importing a socket. So they're gonna say, hey, connect over. And we're gonna connect over to this. We're gonna send this long header and then they're gonna have a payload. This is the payload, then they're gonna have shell code. And they're just gonna say, hey, connect back to us. And that's pretty much it. If you've seen a buffer overflow before, this looks very, very similar and very basic. Uh, so let's go ahead and go back to the scan window here. And I'm just gonna do a search exploit really quick on this and see what's available to us. Uh, so Python, that is 41738, which is this one. Okay, it's already on our machine. But we also have the Ruby module. So Ruby means Metasploit. Metasploit's our favorite. Let's go ahead and just use the Metasploit here. We'll do MSF console. And we're going to give this a go. So let's go ahead and search for that one more time. OK, and a trick somebody sent in is you can just say use and then the number next to it, which I did not know. So thank you for sending that trick in. Uh, very useful information and uh, you guys teach me as much as I teach you. So here's uh, here's a little tip or tidbit from a user. So use zero. Let's go ahead and just say options. OK, the target URI is correct. We're not changing that. Our port of 80 is correct. So all we need to add here is the R host. So let's just say set R host to 10.10.10.14. And then let's show targets and make sure there's no other targets. OK, so it has to be 2003 R2 service pack 2 on x86 architecture. So fingers crossed. Let's hope this works. Play a little bit of Jeopardy music here. And it said no session was created. OK, let's try running it again. And it may take a couple of tries for this to actually function the way it should. And let's try setting the L port to all fives as well. Let's see if that works. If this doesn't work, we might have to reset the machine. Yours hopefully worked. There it goes. So very tricky exploit to get going. Uh, so even when you have the right exploit, sometimes it doesn't work the first time. Uh, so please, if you are, if you have a hunch, give it a go a couple times. Don't just give up on the first go. Uh, but we we got it running, so that's awesome. Uh, let's take a look at who we are. And you can see that we're getting access denied. OK, let's say sysinfo. Uh, we are x86 architecture, x86 interpreter. That's good. There's two logged on users. OK, let's type in PS and look at some of the services that are running. This will give us an idea as to maybe who we are. You see the user here and the session is empty. So really, we don't know who we are at the moment. Um, but we are not system. We can identify we're not system. One, because that command is failing. Two, because if we were system, we would see that we were capable of looking into any of these uh, here. But our session is running here on these um, 
these services. So we're going to have to pick and choose one and see if we can't get it to work. Um, so let's go ahead and migrate and see if we can get a user with the network service since we're not getting a user with the get UID right now. So we'll just say migrate and we'll pick the first one, 1788 and see if it works. Fingers crossed, hopefully it works and it works. So let's try get UID again. Okay, so now we're the authority network service. Uh, so let's background this and we're still not system. So we're gonna have to do some priv ask. Let's do the suggester. Now this should all be very, very familiar to you, right? Um, let's check options and we'll say set session to one, run this bad boy. Okay, so this should all be very familiar to you. The whole process of enumeration, I think this machine is probably easier than Optimum, especially when it comes to priv ask. Now Optimum, you know, we saw that x64 was not very reliable with the Windows exploit suggester, but it should still be something that we're going to and at least checking if we have a Metasploit shell and we're doing capture the flag type box like this. Uh, this isn't super realistic when it comes to, you know, uh, the you know real world, honestly, because we're probably going to be looking at some sort of actor directory priv -esque. I can't even recall the last time that I've used a local priv -esque to actually get a system on a machine other than maybe doing some limited sock assessments and even then get system from Metasploit worked. Uh, so we should always be, you know, keeping that in the back of our mind, but this methodology is good to have and good for a beginner mindset. So please do keep in mind and hopefully your mind went right to, hey, okay, I got the shell and now I need that local exploit suggester to at least give it a go. Okay, so now we've got uh, three different options, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine potential options actually. Uh, we can just copy these and try to go down the list and see if it works. So let's do, let's say use, and I'll paste that one. Um, if this one doesn't work, we'll do the TCP IP, because I do know that works. Uh, we'll say options here, set session to one. We're gonna run it, it's going to fail because, hey, look, it tries. Uh, you can see that it's on the wrong IP. So let's do set L host to ETH zero, or tunnel zero, sorry. And then options, make sure that's correct. Let's try running it again, see if that actually exploits. Hey, okay, let's see what we got. Sysinfo, get UID. We are authority system. We have rooted this machine. So let's go back and talk briefly about everything that just occurred. Uh, well, first of all, we ran our scan. We saw that the service was potentially vulnerable. There was some other stuff in this service too, right? Like. We saw potentially risky methods, and I kind of explained a couple of them that might be risky with the put and the trace. Uh, I do encourage you guys again to go back and learn these methods. The other thing that we saw was, okay, they're using a default under construction page, and there's IS 6.0. So this is probably the first thing we're gonna target with a scan. If we didn't find anything malicious here, then we would go back to the drawing board and probably run Durbuster or, or some sort of uh, deeper enumeration into this website to see maybe if there's something hiding in the back end. But we did find a potential exploit. We ran that exploit and realized it takes a few times sometimes to run an exploit. I got it to work. Went into this get UID and saw something we haven't seen before, which is this access is denied. Because we weren't getting access denied, we can take a look at the PS uh, which is a similar, same thing as a task manager, and just see that there's nothing here, right? There's not a service on this run DLL32 or a user. So we migrated to a user that we can actually use. If we were to attempt to actually use a suggester here with a without this user, uh, I think we would run into issues. So it's always best to switch over if you can and migrate the process and then just kind of go from there. So we did that, we ran the suggester, we picked the first one because we're a little bit of script kitties, that's okay. Uh, we just grabbed the first one and gave it a go. Um, chances are more than one of these work. I know the TCP IP works as well. Uh, so we grabbed that, set our standards, and then ran it and got our authority system shell. So now you can go in into the shell and actually grab the, the root.txt, user.txt if you want, and uh, go from there. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. You should pause the video as well. I'm going to get the scan up and running for Granny, and then we will meet back over in just a second.
All right, this scan looks eerily similar to what we saw before. We've got port 80 open. We've got Microsoft IAS HTTPD 6.0. We've got some potentially risky methods. We've got under construction. And if you go out to the page, it looks exactly the same. So here's my challenge. I'm actually not going to walk through this box because it's so similar and because I just gave you the methodology. I want you to do this one on your own. If you have not done this one on your own, this is your opportunity now to go and do it. Now the path is slightly different. You might have to find a different exploit to get into this machine. So don't just think you can copy the methodology precisely from the last one, but you have a 90% similar overlap. So give this one a go. Take everything that you've learned in this lesson with the service enumeration, do a little research on Google, get those exploits going, and then figure out how to priv -S this machine. I have full faith in you guys and uh, know that you can do it. So that is it for this lesson. Uh, the next lesson we're gonna be covering even more fun. So look out for that video in the next week. So thank you everybody for joining me. Until next time, my name is TCM.